And uh, good evening, folks. This is Joe White uh, with Masterwork Foundation's A Life in the Arts. And today we have the privilege of meeting with Hudson Talbot, uh, who is a, a creator of visual, of wonderful books um, that I am uh, learning all about. Uh, even just during today, I had a chance to really look through and they're marvelous. Uh, so how we do how we proceed <laughs> yes we 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 said during the as we were talking about this that maybe this is the one where todd gets to hold up a lot of books but anyway <laughs> anyway but um so but todd gets to do something else which is as we start um todd gets to do uh, a little speech about who masterwork is and what we do Thanks, Joe. Um, yes, the Masterwork Music and Art Foundation was founded over 60 years ago um, with a mission to support excellence in the arts. Today, we issue a number of grants. There's a premier award that goes out to an artist or an organization, a $10,000 uh, grant. Um, and then there are a series of community arts grants, smaller awards that go out to individuals or organizations who are um, actively supporting the community and excellence in the in the arts in their community and there's some competitive awards we have some free classes and this series here life in the arts which um, celebrates people who've dedicated their lives to the arts and today I'm very um, happy that um, the remarkable Hudson Talbot <laughs> is joining us uh, to tell us a little about you know, his life in the arts. Well, uh, so what we're going to do then, Todd will go, Todd will disappear for a moment and we'll just start talking. Um, so the kind of the theme, if this series has one, is how did you come to have a life in the arts? Because it ain't easy. Um, there's all sorts of people who talk about how they'd like to, and I'm always uh, delighted to meet people who've found a particular path. And the thing that's really delightful is that the path is very frequently not the path you'd expect. And uh, so um, you uh, began, uh, you were saying that, it, that you drew to escape the, uh, the the world that you uh that you lived in and um reality of the world that i lived in yes well i'm gonna there's actually from your book a walk in the woods um which that was woods. one that there there are there there is a lovely lady reading that book and showing you the illustrations available on youtube um, which should not prevent you from buying the book, but which, uh, but which you might enjoy. But what I was going to bring up here, uh, here, and we got to make it bigger. And unfortunately, it gets a little pixelated. But I was going to share and just let people see this because this really struck me. Um, this is my experience of every worthwhile piece of art I've ever encountered <laughs> is, um, but this little boy who I'm, I'm guessing is you. Oh yeah. Uh, that, that would be me at about seven years old. Mm -hmm. And the crayons mm -hmm. and um, the, and the ambiguous flesh colored one uh, back then they, it would still have been called that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, diving into a whole nother world. And um, this is a, this is a book that uh, there, I actually, this is the one that I can say that I've actually read the whole thing because someone read it to me in a thing on YouTube. And um, it, uh, it is a delightful and, um, and significant book because in, I guess it is your story in many ways. Um, it is, it's, uh, about as close as anything I've done so far to being autobiographical. I, I'm sure like all artists, there's a, a piece of us in every piece of art that we do, of course, they're all reflections, mm. aspects of who we are. But this one's pretty uh, close to my own journey. Um, 
being dyslexic uh, long before that term was used in sort of right. uh, common parlance. Uh, I was just slow. But before I go on, I just want to say thank you so much for um, inviting me to be on your show. I'm, I'm very honored. You've got some wonderful people, and I'm sure you will have many more wonderful creative people. And it's just such a great uh, thing to be uh, included. I really appreciate it. Um, anyway, uh, back to me. <laughs> uh, that was, uh, I, I uh, remember uh, suggesting it to my editor you know, a few years back rather sheepishly because even at, at my age, I was still, I still bore a little shame and embarrassment about being a very slow reader. And, um, I, you know, I, I finally sort of just mentioned it to her, my editor, and she said, uh, well, do you realize how many people in the arts, uh, illustrators and writers that I see that are dyslexic? Mm. We need this book. There are so many kids out there um, uh, that are, uh, that would need it. And uh, boy, I can tell you, Joe, the response that I've gotten for this book is unlike any other I've done of the however many, I think it's 27 books that I've done, all of which fortunately, knock on wood, have um, done well enough to get me to, you know, them to pay me to do another book. I've made some money. <laughs> somebody. That's always good. That's always good. Um, but this one has just had uh, so much more meaning because of um, the parents and the librarians and the teachers who, who shared the book and shared with me how much it meant for them having a tool to use to um, get a particular uh, child engaged in reading. And really, I'm never going to be an authority about dyslexia or anything like that. I'm not trying to be. What I wanted to do is first of all, show that they're not the only one. They're not oh, alone. Yeah. Um, and uh, just to feel okay about themselves, feel a little self-empowered, I would say, build up their self-confidence and say, hey, look look at me. I was a slow reader and now they pay me to write books. Mm. So, you know, I, 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 I hope that I can use myself as an example. I, well, I don't know how you'd be a better expert at, this uh i mean i i'm not sure that the stuff in the scientific literature is as helpful uh might be helpful to other scientists and you know to clinicians yeah. but uh, i don't think it would be as helpful to to the the child who's experiencing it and um so i don't know the other thing um well i did i mean todd writes out a series of questions and I sometimes do those <laughs> and sometimes they're very helpful and sometimes the conversation goes in a different direction and that's, but that's all good because this is about, you know, having you be here. The one thing that I had noted is that, um, you know, some people write books that get made into movies mm -hmm. and you've actually taken a stage play and created a book from it so you've actually worked in both directions which i think is not everyone can say that so uh, i don't know what about you know so, so I, what's that process uh and well, i can tell you joe i have had more moments uh of good luck in in my long career the journey that i've been on than practically anybody else I know. I just try to remain humble and grateful for all the breaks that I've gotten. And um, starting with doing my very first book, uh, the, which was the book that uh, uh, Steven Spielberg found and made into a film. And my second book was uh, Into the Woods, uh, which Steven Sondheim found. And I got to do the book of Into the Woods. Mm -hmm. and on and on you know i've just uh, uh, it, it wasn't too bad a start out of the gate that no. i had that was just a, a great good fortune 
I, and I'm just, I remain mm. grateful for that. Uh, and, you know, do the best I can to make the most of it and share uh, what I can um, uh, at this juncture, you know, 28 books later. I was going to say the, um, the, the there's a whole bunch of these. I'm looking right now, if I'm looking off the screen, apologies, I'm looking at your website, mm -hmm. uh, which is HudsonTalbot.com. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone go there. Uh, and because there's just marvelous, all sorts of marvels. The um, I'm uh, yeah, I'm a cat person, so it's all about meow uh, appeals. But then you also have from wolf to wolf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, so, oh, well, all right. Uh, you had said um, with, with Into the Woods. Now, was that something that you came to the, the play and did the book? Or was it something that Stephen Sondheim saw that you had started with? Well, um, if I could uh, backtrack a little bit, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the story, uh, you know, my my own little, I, I won't call it a myth of origin because it's it, it actually happened to me, but it's my story of origin. <laughs> Your uh, origin story, yes. My origin story is a, uh, as an illustrator, you know, I was- a, Superheroes, yes, there we go. <laughs> well, I was, um, I was a painting major in college. I was determined to come to New York and do that, and which I did. I went to school in Rome and loved all the narrative paintings, all the allegorical paintings of Caravaggio and you know, all the Italian greats. Uh, I love telling stories with pictures, I realized. And so I thought I could do um, illustration kind of as my day job while mm -hmm. I worked on my quote unquote real art at night. And of course, illustration became my art form. I just loved it so much mm -hmm. because I love to tell stories and I could do it visually. Um, a, a children's book editor saw some of my work. I, I'd done a lot for several years in, uh, New York and uh, children's book editor saw something. Look me up in the Manhattan phone book. See, this is the day. <laughs> uh, that's when you could. Yeah. <laughs> like, you could still do that. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is a real New York story because he was at Crown Publishers, which was a, a, a block and two, a block or two east of me. I was at Fifth Avenue and 19th Street. He had found my work at the original Barnes and Noble, which was Fifth Avenue and 18th Street. Oh, I. I miss it. Yeah, you remember it. <laughs> yes, just such a great every every imprint book in the world. Mm, it's very well, good. And they, I think they actually almost did that. Although, I mean, I don't know that I don't think you could do it today. Oh, but... uh, it's it's not none of that's the same today. So he just took a shot and see to see if I was around. Of course, I was. I was in his office the next day. Um, we did uh, my first book together called We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. Mm. And um, that was, you know, by great good fortune found by Spiel Steven Spielberg. I'm told that his son at the time made him read it over and over again to him. So he thought he he figured he had something there that he should pursue. And they gave me a call. Um, and, uh, you know, that certainly put me on the map uh, just to be associated with the Spielberg organization. In the meantime, I was in that the publisher's office when um, I ran into James Lapine, you know, the, mm. um, yes, he was a friend of mine from New York, you know, just from being in the city together. And we kind of said, what are you doing here to each other? Because I was, <laughs> You know, he, he didn't know that I'd become a children's book author. He said he was doing this book with Sondheim or this uh, musical with Sondheim based on Grimm's fairy tales. And, uh, you know, that he thought, you know, I could be right for it because he knew my work. But it was very interesting. He did not want it to be like a nepotistic thing. So he said, why don't you submit a piece and the editor will submit some other pieces to Sondheim and let him choose. So a couple of days later, Lapine gets a call from Sondheim saying, we found the guy, I found the guy. Um, he's got this a weird name, Hudson Talbot or Talbot, something like that. But he's the guy to do this. 
So that's how it started. Again, incredible lucky break. I'm, mm. I'm, you know, things happen like that, or certainly did back in those days in New York. And um, I, I got to do um, um, the book form of Into the Woods. And you know, the wonderful thing about that was that it really made me uh, a Sondheimophile. I, I, I liked his work well enough before, but to spend time with his and a Jim Lapine script pouring over their words and mm. the lyrics and just all the subtleties and the refinement, things that you you miss when it's just flying by in a song was mm. just one of the great experiences of my life, Joe. It really mm. was. Uh, so uh, those two things really got me started. And uh, I've been doing children's books ever since, you know, that that's really been, and right up to the one that you mentioned where uh, I can kind of do things that have personal meaning to me, like the uh, Walk in the Words, the book about uh, my own story about coming yeah. to love words, even though I'm a slow reader. Well, the I was going to say, uh, you know, what you're describing about Sondheim's work is why I saw Follies five times. <laughs> Because you just keep missing things, <laughs> and uh, and every time you saw it, you there was something. You know, there was something you hadn't seen before, and I don't know how many times I've seen Swe Sweeney Todd. So, oh. but um, the uh, but, I, but what? So that one was taking something that they were developing for the stage and bringing it to paper. Mm -hmm. But you've also had the opposite experience where you've had something that you started that started on paper with you mm -hmm. and that turned into something. And I, I, I'm, I, well, I guess what I'm trying to, to get at is like, what is that like? And what is the, uh, with the adaptation process? How does that, uh, you know, how does that work? And well, that is a great question, uh, particularly because I'm such a control freak. I, I <laughs> want to do everything. I mean, I, again, most of my books, have been completely mine since I'm uh, uh, writing as well as illustrating right. the vast majority of my books. Uh, I I do everything. I design it. I do the layouts, everything. Like I say, I'm a control freak. So um, the adaptation project, you know, when that, when I have to do that or when I'm asked to do that and I choose to do it, uh, I've been really lucky because it's been with, some wonderful people, Stephen Seinheim, uh, right. for example. Uh, I did one uh, many years ago that is still um, in print and doing well for the great um, author, uh, Jack Warden Woodson, who's won enormous, you know, so many awards for her writing. And um, we did a book together called Show Way, um, which uh, uh, since has become a uh, a children's musical that premiered at the Kennedy Center about two years ago. And I just learned uh, last week that they're taking it on the road. They're gonna do a, a um, what do you call it? A road road show? A, a, a tour, tour, yeah. A tour of, uh, of show way. Um, in both of those cases, it was, and there's been other uh, authors that I've, I've interpreted their work visually. Um, I, uh, it's a new discipline for me and I just have to look at it that way. What can I do within this framework where I am honoring the text that I'm get, given and um, interpret it visually uh, in some cases uh, uh, like in the Sondheim case um, to re really rewrite it. I mean, Jesus, to rewrite Stephen Sondheim's words. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, that would be Gettysburg Address. What you know? How do you do that? Uh, it, that would be daunting. Yes, <laughs> it absolutely was. And um, I, you know, I did. I gave it my best shot. Uh, resubmitted it to him. Let him do whatever you want, Mister Seinheim. It's you, right. you know, um, he was quite forgiving, and um, you know, did some trims here and there. But it was a process where mm. I did what I could. And I actually love that in general with uh, 
the um, uh, the work that I do, figuring out what my parameters are, and then seeing what I could do to bring myself to that framework within that framework. Like for example, with with children's books, for example, um, they're uh, you know picture books. Uh, generally, they're no more than thirty two pages. They're done in increments of eight pages. It has to do with the printing process. So right. it's thirty two. 40 pages, 48, right. 56, so forth and so on. Um, what can I do within that context that will, you know, be my work and uh, still uh, fit within it and, and, and work for my audience, you know, really uh, do something for uh, uh, who I'm speaking to with that particular book, with that particular project. So, of course, with the Sinheim book, I was free to use his language, but also grown up language, even though it was based on Grimm's fairy tales, the whole conceit. Grimm, Grimm's not entirely for children. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had uh, that freedom. With, with kids, you have to remember, uh, I never talk down to them, but they're going to have a limited vocabulary. Right. And and a limited attention span. So, you know, as much as I can put in to the artwork, it's telling the story and it can be subtle and uh, tongue in cheek and ironic visually. They kind of get it on a- Oh yeah, yeah. No, I um, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I don't know if you, but, but I'm a Philip Pullman fan and in, he has a wonderful book called Demon Voices, in which uh -huh. he talks about storytelling. And one of the things that he really, it really upsets him is the notion of categories in bookstores. Oh, me too. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely. We are uh, on the same page, so to speak, about that. Drive. Yeah. Crazy. That, um, you know, that the notion that, um, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I was unfamiliar with your work before this afternoon, and I'm looking at this and going, well, how did I, how did this escape me? Because I do, I love children's stuff, children's illustrated books. Um, oh, good grief, my, uh, we we had um, cousins from Denmark who would send us Tove Janssen mm -hmm. uh, books, and there's amazing amazing work done which um the, the the only problem is that the adults aren't intelligent enough to get it uh, <laughs> and, uh, but um no and it's the, the, it's such a gift and i i don't know the uh i'm now uh i'm 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 supposed to be old enough to know better but i uh, but i don't uh, and, um there's so many one of all, I, and the, you know, I was just saying that that one of the grand traditions, even in Broadway, has been work that started out as mm -hmm. graphic arts. Uh, uh, Lil Abner, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, but actually, one of my very favorite shows that didn't wasn't a hit on Broadway uh, was a was Archie and Mahidabel. Um, oh which is uh, based, it's poetry by Don Marquis, but Edward uh, uh, was George Harriman, who did Crazy Cat, illustrated yeah. the books. And um, it it's an, that's an amazing little show. And maybe someday I'll get to direct it uh, if I, if I per persist long enough. But um, so yeah, okay. what are you working on and what's what's new and what's... Uh, what am I working on now? Well, yeah. uh, I, uh, because of the success of the last book, um, uh, my editor was interested in doing not exactly a follow-up or a sequel, but something that um, had some value with, uh, you know, for kids and, and teachers in schools um, that, um, you know, I, I, I I think she saw uh, what I could do in terms of uh, interpreting in a very accessible way uh, for kids with particular challenges um, to be able to read it and feel good about it and get something out of it. So um, 
I'm uh, working on a book now, which uh, is also for um, my my publisher, Random House. Nancy Paulson is my editor. And, uh, she has her own imprint, Nancy Paulson Books. Um, uh, I don't want to tell, since it's unpublished, I'm not going to tell you too don't, much. Don't, no, don't, don't talk the book out. <laughs> anyway. yeah. um, it, let me put it this way. It's about a boy who can't sit still. Ah. A hard time with focusing his attention. My, my wife teaches in a uh, preschool mm -hmm. and, um, Boy, is she familiar with that. But yeah, not, yeah, yeah I suspect there'll be a lot of people who can relate to that. Um, yeah, and every time I yeah. mention it, it's like, oh, that, I, that's my kid. That oh, yeah, kid. really. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's all pervasive now. So, um, and you know, the funny thing is that, of course, uh, with the dyslexia book within uh, Walk of the Words, that was my story. I wasn't really thinking of this necessarily as my story. The more I did the research, and particularly the more I started writing from you know a personal place, uh, the more I realized, yeah, that's me too. That's well, me all, too. it's all of us. It's, it is absolutely all of us. And you know. I mean, I mean, some of us manage it better earlier than others, but that's about, but that's about the best you can say. Yeah. Um, um, and. Um, well, the world we live in with so many uh, sources and, you know, so much um, uh, stimuli coming from different directions more all the time, uh, it's hard not to have a very scattered attention. And, you know, that's sort of what it comes down to. My wife and I just had dinner at a, a diner. And they have two big TVs in the two corners of the room. And they're showing... This it's like Halloween TV, oh, yeah. and and it it drives me crazy because I'm trying to talk to someone, mm -hmm. and uh, it would seem particularly that a lot of restaurateurs really don't want you to do that. Yeah, yeah. they they want you to watch the game or whatever it is that's up there. And ouch. Yeah. But anyway, it's um. So, I. The one thing that I will encourage everyone to do is to go to HudsonTalbot.com because if uh, there is just an amazing collection of books there, so everybody should, uh, everyone should go look because um, you're missing something uh, if you haven't if you haven't seen this. Um, the other thing I guess I just I did want to mention is that you're on the board of the Thomas Cole home. Yes, the and, Thomas Cole National Historic Site. I have been for about, gosh, 17, 18 years. And um, it's it's been a wonderful experience, continues to be. Hmm. Uh, because uh, 18 years ago, it was uh, always, I mean, if it was thought of it uh, at all, it was sort of like Olana's a uh, shabby little uh, cousin, you know, that they don't want to talk about. <laughs> and it's not like that anymore. We've really come into our own. Right. And we're doing tremendous things there. We have a wonderful educational program. We, the, uh, the thing that we really pride ourselves on is that it's a really an education center. The importance of uh, the Hudson River School and Thomas Cole in particular, um, and how he created uh, uh, the concept of America the Beautiful. Uh, you know, uh, when he was painting it uh, or starting out, America was time, still very small. It was still a very rough country. It had been only about uh, 40 or 50 years since the revolution. So we didn't really have such a clear identity of who we were. and the reason his work resonated so much was because we saw how beautiful we are and what we could be. Uh, my favorite quote of his is that we are still in Eden. And I think that's what his great hope was to make people realize how fortunate we are to have this beautiful country. And, you know, where I live, I live in the Catskill Mountains in the Hudson Valley. 
And uh, that's uh, what he was sharing with the folks in New York City and the, you know, the rest of the world. And uh, uh, that's how it all got started. It, it had that magic uh, button that he pushed that resonated with everybody. Mm. Well, and, 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 and he has, you know, descendants spiritually, at least uh, in people like Ansel Adams. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that opened up the West uh, that people, you know, kind of hadn't ever thought of the majesty of. But um, one of the, this, this is a, a recurrent thing where we've been, uh, we've done a couple of um, our interviews with people uh, who manage or executive director of that, this kind of site. And um, we have, I have one in town. I've got to work uh, the, executive director we have a, a thing called the keeler tavern mm -hmm. which was here during the revolution and has a cannonball wedged in one of the walls oh, yeah. uh, from our little we had a little it's a skirmish but it, we call it the battle of ridgefield but which town are you in? ridgefield connecticut oh yeah yeah and um but and just just on our southern border with wilton uh we have the only national park dedicated to the visual arts which is the thomas which is the the weir farm and uh -huh. and he was a and you know the french impressionists get all of all of the you know all of the press uh oh, yeah. we had a bunch of, of really wonderful american ones too and uh it was certainly the uh french impressionist and all the american industrialists and uh you know nouveau riche going to France to uh, and Europe on the Grand Tour that sent uh, the Hudson River School into obscurity because it was it was what people were buying in the middle of the 19th century, uh, but it wasn't uh, until the French Impressionist and people started looking back at Europe to buy prestige basically right. uh, that uh, uh, Hudson River School was in in fact that was thought of as kind of a pejorative some you know wag a, a critic made it up and sort of like saying the hoboken school of art you know <laughs> the, 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 you know that's that's how he meant it and so it was really almost a hundred years before people started appreciating what had well uh, but started right here one of the good things about time is that eventually things get rediscovered sometimes and so there, there's all sorts of, uh, you know, just keep looking because there's wonderful stuff that nobody's made a big fuss about yet. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. if you, which actually, if you were looking to become a collector, that's what to buy. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, listen, this has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And the one thing I would like to do, and I'll, um, but I'll run these by you. I I'll get a couple of images and make up like a little, you know, collage of two or three or four or five images. And we'll add them at the end of this conversation so people can, can share in how wonderful your work is and not just me talking. Uh, so it's, um, but we'll do that. And um, I, so what I'm going to do now is invite Todd to return and he will, we'll see him. There he is. And we'll, um, and, and we will have our last little talk about masterwork and sharing. And, um, you know, everyone have a wonderful evening. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, this has been a wonderful discovery for me. Well, and thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate being here with, with okay. you. Okay. Well, and with that, um, Hudson, you have my sincere thanks um, and such great appreciation. You were really the definition of a mover and shaker, you know, not <laughs> only in, you know, the art world, but in the Hudson Valley to have done so much. Well, yeah, we didn't really even get to talk about uh, Catskill and, and Athens and everything that uh, has been happening here for the last several years. You're part of that, too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed he is. <laughs> you know, I, I, I really think of Catskill as my newest art form. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> well, another hit. <laughs> okay. Yes. Soon to be a movie <laughs> or a Broadway play. <laughs>
anyway, I should say that um, for more information about Masterwork Arts, you can visit www.masterworkarts.org. This wonderful interview will be on our YouTube channel and featured on the site. And Hudson, really, thank you so much. You're really just a remarkable person. I'm so happy to know you. Thank People, you. check out this beautiful artwork here and these gorgeous books. <laughs> and with that, we'll see you next time. So, as I promised earlier, here are some of Hudson's wonderful illustrations. Here we have the title page from A Walk in the Words. And this is a young boy diving into the drawing he has created from Walk in the Words. This is from the book Wolf to Woof about the history of dogs and human beings. And equal time, <laughs> this is a book called It's All About Meow. And finally, here's a two-page spread from River of Dreams, which is a history of the Hudson River. So thanks again to Hudson, and thank you for joining us for this journey. And we'll hopefully see you soon with another Life in the Arts.